Peter Bennett Jones, PBJ, is a living legend. He has nurtured and championed some of the most extraordinary talent ever to have appeared on British television screens. Rowan Atkinson, Amanda Iannucci, Don French, Harry Enfield and Chris Morris, to name but a few. In 1986, he formed Comic Relief with Lenny Henry, proving you can make wonderful, entertaining television, which is also a force for good. In May this year, he was awarded BAFTA's Special Television Award. The BAFTA Special Award goes to the very special Peter Bennett Jones. Thank you, BAFTA, and thank you to my colleagues. He's been called the man who's too powerful to piss off. Tonight, he will entertain us and educate us on how to make more compelling, innovative and extraordinary television. BAFTA have, you know, generously giving me a platform to talk about something which I think is important and I care about, uh, is that how we ensure that our leading broadcasters and producers, there's a lot of you here, um, deliver programming which actually matters and which shines a light on issues we do or should care about, and, you know, which changes perceptions and makes a lasting impact on viewers and on society. And in short, I'm asking, how do we use television as an agent for, for change and impact? Anyone who sees TV as anything other than the dominant platform still is, is just plain wrong. Now, the, the internet, which many predicted would undermine TV viewing, actually appears to be augmenting it. The medium has adapted and has never been more popular. And all this before the Secretary of State's local TV initiative. And when that kicks in, God knows what pantomime there's going to be, but uh, thank goodness. Be that as it may, you know, in many ways, technology just makes it easier for people to access content. And it's content that I want to focus on, because whatever its delivery, it's content, not technology, that's going to be the key to the health of our cherished broadcasters. And it's content that will always be at the heart of what we do. Now, the often quoted founding father of the BBC, um, the august Lord Reith, stated... Um, that the corporation had to, had, and I quote, the responsibility to carry into the greatest number of homes everything that it was best in every department of human knowledge, endeavour and achievement. And it's because of these lofty goals, ingrained really at the beginning of our broadcasting by the pioneers, that I still think we have the best and most respective TV industry in the world. There's still a great deal of, of quality and commitment. But I think increasingly the girls are not often enough at the heart of the producing and commissioning process and that we need to keep sight of that. Now let's be clear, commissioning is a tough job and it's easy to get things wrong or at times to be given a little, little less than helpful advice. And I want, to, I want to focus on three areas, the commercial pressure on professional commissioning, this will include thoughts about eyeballs and advertising and the twisted tyranny of data. Secondly, about what I perceive as a lack of faith at times in creative talent. And finally, touching on the schizophrenic nature of public sector broadcasting, particularly at the BBC. Professional commissioning entails data-driven, consumer-led, and very often imitative commissioning. I think copycat shows tend to prevail at the expense of the new and original. Clever people producing clever rubbish. And we all know that the dominant factor here is ratings, the dreaded overnights. Now, ratings are clearly a vital currency for commercial broadcasters but wholly inadequate and still far too dominant for broadcasting with a public service remit. Scheduling is known as the dark art, and I would like a little more light shed upon the processes behind it and accountability for decisions made for both suppliers and viewers alike. It could also lead to more adventurous and broader output, because I mentioned before, the net effect of all this is a tendency to follow, adapt, imitate and repeat what has succeeded before in the chase for ratings. And this inevitably stifles originality. Back the individuals and their talent, and it will pay dividends with more unique achievements. Test creative thinking, but don't try to dictate it. You know, we in the UK are blessed uh, with an extraordinary depth of creative talent, and broadcasting gives it much support and many rewarding outlets. But my principal plea for the folk in charge of engaging them is to trust your programme makers and stars. All our artists need their champions, and uh, we should be championing them, especially artists who provoke, who agitate for change, 
and engagement and create television that matters. They tend to be pretty tricky, but that's part of the pleasure. You know, life working with Armando Iannucci on his splendid uh, political series, The Thick of It, or anything to do with Chris Morris, it, you know, has always been fun and challenging. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not dull, and neither is the fruit of their labours, because they're passion producers with a clear agenda to shape things up, to be constructively mischievous. And I, I see them as television alchemists, and it's critical that we create our new gold by remaining creatively and socially ambitious. I've long observed that at our dominant broadcaster, you know, and I consider it to be a huge national asset and a, a massive fan of the BBC, but there's a schizophrenic fault line in its makeup and management, which I would argue is part of the problem. By and large, we have DGs, deputies, strategists, controllers, policy police, all appointed with little or no meaningful experience of showbiz, of scripted drama and comedy, or of talent management. And producers and their responsibilities have been neutered in the process. Impartiality, so crucial to news, is the enemy of the passionate dramatist and comedian. Theirs is a different culture, and there should be a different set of rules and measurements of success in these contrasting areas. Scripted uh, and comedy material should often be partial, be provocative, be offensive. We patronise the audience by being so protective and prissy. The attitude and rules governing all this need relaxing fast if the BBC is to retain first call working with best creative talent not just the best news people. There needs to be a major correction, or even perhaps the cleaving of the BBC into two distinct entities, journalism on the one hand and entertainment on the other, with different governance, commissioning processes and accountability, as with ITV and ITN. So those were a few sort of criticisms, but I, but I want to point out that I do think we get it right sometimes, and that's what justified in calling for more ambitious standards across the industry and better evaluation of what we collectively produce. My plea to writers, producers, dramatists, comedians, documentary makers is to pursue your passions. Agitate away. Convince. Focus on what change you want to make, what views you want to be heard and shared, and make this the starting point of a television development, not the afterthought. And thereby you can create a, a legacy. And commissioners, don't be happy unless somewhere on your stations, all the time, is something trying to make this world a better place.